Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 18th, 2019. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. It's my show. <laughs> this season we are covering amateur radio. So um, we converted, we've gone through most of different stuff now we've gone through the parts of radio the, the electronic parts of any kind of electronics really um we've talked about how to operate how to communicate with other people now we get into the and if you want to call it more legal stuff or the important stuff the stuff that the fcc requires you to know before you can broadcast so as i kind of mentioned at the beginning um we are covered under the FCC's um, Part 97 rules. So you at any time can go out and read that. In fact, they many places highly encourage you to read through that. I have not yet. But it covers anything and everything that you need to know legally to use your license. So within here, they start talking about the different coverages and, you know, Part 97, how to find it. Um... And like we talked about when we first started, what is the stated purpose of the amateur radio service? And it, and that's and breaking it down a little bit more beyond that. And so uh, question T1A0 on chapter 7.1, the basis and purpose covers all of those sections and then gives you more context as to what each of those parts mean. Um, let, we can review those here real quick. So part A was recognition and enhancement of the value of amateur service to the public as a voluntary non-commercial communication service, particularly with respect to providing emergency communications. Part B is continuation and extension of the amateur's proven ability to contribute to the advancement of the radio art. Um, C is encouragement and improvement of the amateur service through rules which provide for advancing skills in both communications and technical phases of the art. D, expansion of the existing reservoir with an amateur radio service of trained operators, technicians, and electronics experts. And E, continuation and extension of the amateur's unique ability to enhance international goodwill. So they cover all of these different, uh, you know, each of these sections, they, they talk about it, and then they cover a little bit more background into it and kind of what that means. Very good reading for people just trying to try and learn background of this. Uh, the next, they talk about the type and li- and t- type and classes of library, of licenses. I can't speak tonight. So they, they, they talk about the, the, the amateur licenses being granted today, which is technician, general, and amateur extra. Each of them carrying a different set of frequency and operating privileges as you go from technician all the way up to extra. Uh, they do mention that there are other licenses out there. You can't get these anymore, but there are still some that are grandfathered in from previous t- uh, times. So you have the novice, which is technically less than the technician for privileges. Um, Then you have the technician plus, which I'm not quite sure where that falls in. I assume it's between technician and general. And then you have advanced, which kind of falls in between general and extra, more towards the extra side. So advanced became extra, but it was different. So you just didn't transition over you actually had to test and get over there some people have done it other people just said no 
I got it. I'm not worried about it. I don't want to take any more tests. They also say that clubs can also be a license holder. So um, I'm not officially part of it yet. Was it W0WCL? I think is the call letters of my local club. So they are also a licensed. Essentially, they're another licensed entity within the FCC, and they have their own license. Um, but you do have to have an, a designated uh, licensee or des- a licensed trustee who holds the club license. Um, they, they they show you what your license look like. And um, I don't remember if it told you this here, in here or not. The FCC used to email your certificate. And by that, you had no idea if you actually passed or not at one point until you received your copy of the license in the mail six weeks later. Now today, you know if you pass by the time you walk out of the test. And then, uh, depending upon who you go through or various conditions, within um, usually about two weeks, the FCC will will email you or you go out to, and look at the FCC's uh, database and you see that you have your license and it's all electronic now. You can d- download an electronic cop- copy. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to go get it laminated so they're, they ke- they're kept nice. They talk about the different class examinations and what you need to pass. So the technician and general both have 35 questions on the on each test. You are expected to be able to answer 26 questions correctly to pass. I think it's like 70 to 75% range, somewhere on there. Um, in Amateur Extra, that is a 50-question test, and you need to get 37 correct. So it's the same percentage, it's just more questions. They talk a little bit more about the examinations and how they reference to elements. Uh, they start with element two, not element one, because element one used to be the Morse code test, which you no longer have to take. They just never renumbered them after that. Um, they talk. They mention that your license is actually good for ten years, so you can renew with them every ten years, and it's not going to cost. I, I don't believe it costs you anything else. But they do expire after 10 years, so you do need to renew them every two years, or every 10 years. And the nice thing is, if you get a vanity, it actually extends it out again. Or if you take your test, it extends it out again. And that cost is 15 bucks. (laughs) Uh, They mentioned um, VEs, or Volunteer Examiners. These are people who are trained. Whoa. So there are volunteer examiners uh, or volunteer. Yeah. Volunteer examiners who actually give the test out. And in order to give a test, like I could technically become a VE, but I could only test technicians. I couldn't do anything higher. Um, If you're an amateur extra, you can then give the test to, you can give the technician test, the general class test and the amateur extra test. Because you can't go any higher. So that's another thing you can do if you like to be play, uh, play teacher and grade papers. You can become a VE. Now, obviously, there's teaching. There's other things you can do with that. But it's just another great way to help get others get their licenses. Um, they talk about taking the test. They talk about um, filling out your answer sheet. And some of the information regarding what you need to fill that out. They kind of show you what that sheet kind of looks like. Uh, There's also a little attachment that you keep for yourself. Um, I was told my testing station to keep that in like a safe. Because apparently they've had issues in the past of confirming that the the people have the licenses they say they do. You'd think it would be easy if it's in the FCC database. But eh, whatever. I kept it. Put in the safe. They talk about your responsibilities. So the FCC requires you to provide and maintain a valid current mailing address in their database at all times. 
If you move or even change PO boxes, you are required to update that information in their ULS, which is their, um, does it def define that here? Universal licensing system is the ULS. <clears throat> so from what I can tell, that covers, a, that's a system built to maintain any license through the FCC. Um, if mail ever returns to you as undeliverable, your license can be suspended or revoked or even just removed from the database. So it's good to keep it up to date. Um, the other piece of information you might be unfamiliar with is the FRN or Federal Registration Number. So this is a unique ID given to you. Um, it's it's linked to your social security number, but it's that way you can put it on your test and not actually write your social security number down. So when I went to go take my test, they highly encourage you to go get this FRN number before you take your test. That way you can um, just write that number down on your test, and then they use that number to assign your license to you ultimately then. Um, as a federal licensee, you are obligated to make your station available for inspection upon request by an FCC representative. So this can be at any time, any place, I guess. Uh, these visits are extremely rare and only recur occur when there's reason to believe your station has been operated improperly. So you keep your nose clean, so to speak. You are going to be fine. So they kind of put down a little bit of the letter of the law there. And I've heard of a couple different cases where people have had their licenses either revoked yeah, I think in both cases as they were revoked, they were um and they were told they can no longer apply for a a license for at least like 2 years or 5 years or whatever. And in both cases people were illegally transmitting on frequencies that were not amateur radio. In fact, it was worse because it was public safety frequencies. Um yeah, that's not, if you want to get caught, that's the easiest way to get caught, especially if you throw out your license number out on that. Yeah, not smart. So um, tomorrow we're going to talk about bans and privileges just a little bit more. I hope we're in severe thunderstorm watch. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about, about your uh, bans and privileges, and my phone's going nuts because we have a severe thunderstorm watch now. So, um, yeah, weather, it's fun. And uh, you'll probably hear part of a uh, KC0 Q&A. No, okay, that didn't do much there. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hurry up and uh, um, end this here because uh, thunderstorms are coming. Um, so um, I'm sorry, don't all sorts of distract here. So I am gonna wrap this up here, and I will talk to you tomorrow. So until tomorrow, this is uh, seventy three from WX zero MIK. The frequency is going to be clogged with thunderstorms, but for me, it's clear. Bye. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK73.